Welcome to Wake Forest Men's Health. Today we're going to be talking about Peroni's disease. This was named for a French doctor in the 1700s who wasn't the first one to describe the phenomenon, but it still bears his name. It might not be a disease in the way you typically think of disease, but it can certainly cause a state of dis-ease once it interferes with sexual health. Okay, so to better understand the condition, let's start with an overview of male anatomy. So when we think about the male anatomy, we think about a series of two. Well, there's the one that empties our bladder, but then there's two other chambers inside that fill with blood to allow for sexual function. If you were to take a cross section and look at these, you would see the two chambers for blood flow closest to the top of the penis with a single blood vessel running down the length of each one and a tough connective tissue layer around the outside to maintain the pressure internally. The tube that we urinate through is located at the bottom, essentially the six o'clock position, if you will. That's called the urethra, okay? Now, some men will develop scar tissue involving these changes. And we'll talk a little bit about why we think it gets there. However, as with any scar, it can contract and pull in the direction of the scar. And so the most common scenario is that it pulls up towards the body. Occasionally, it can be to the side, and in a smaller percentage, it can actually pull it down. So if you think about this from a side profile, if that's the scar, what we also refer to as a plaque, it's now causing curvature at the location of the scar. If the degree of curvature exceeds typically about, we'll say, 30 degrees, it can interfere with intercourse, okay? Occasionally, you can even see notching on the side of the penis, and this can be very alarming and distressing for men. Sometimes they may be able to feel the scar and might describe it as something that feels like a dime or a nickel sitting inside the penis. I want to know how it got there. In many cases, they may not be able to recall any specific trauma or sexual related injury to the penis. What is believed to happen is that over time, repetitive sexual activity can cause what we refer to as micro trauma or small episodes, where perhaps there are small internal tears that you're not aware of acutely, but can set the stage for a scar to be developed. And if that scar starts to tether the penis, it can make it weaker. And so, when men come to the office, they want to know, what are my options for treatment? So we have guidelines in place to decide what is appropriate for them based on where they are in this process. Many men may come in and say that I'm having pain, the curvature is progressing. So we've traditionally described an early phase and a late phase in this process. In the early phase, some people have worried about intervening too quickly because they might go on to develop more curvature and you might have undertreated the situation. This is a little dogmatic. It may actually be true that intervening sooner would prevent worsening of the condition from where it is at that point in time. But if a man comes in and says, I have significant curvature, I don't have pain, it's interfering with my sexual activity, we have to come up with a solution for that man. There are no oral therapies approved for this condition and none have proven effective. Topical gels, likewise, have not proven effective. There's one medication that has been FDA approved for injection therapy into this scar or into this plaque. However, the results aren't really all that great and there are risks involved, even though it was FDA approved. In the main trials that awarded approval or that succeeded in getting this drug approved, the average man was about 50 years of age and had about 50 degrees of upward curvature. After a year's worth of injections and bending the penis opposite the direction of curvature, the average curvature at the end of the study was still over 30 degrees. So were they better than when they started? Yes. Were they better enough? That's debatable. Okay. So if a man is still in the situation with significant curvature and said, what can be done to fix this? we have a number of surgical options to address that patient. One option might be to simply fold the tissue on the opposite side, essentially imbricating it, if you will. This is called plication. 
It's simple, it's outpatient, and in the setting of dorsal curvature, it avoids the nerves on the top side of the penis, so it's largely successful in preserving a man's erectile function. For patients with more significant disease, large scars, especially if they're heavily calcified, they might need portions or all of that scar removed. If that happens, It requires mobilizing or pushing over the nerves that run in that area, removing this tissue in part or in full, and then placing a graft in its place. That's often very successful at straightening the penis. However, because of the situation involving the nerves, there's about a 20% risk to worsening erectile function. Okay, and that has to be taken into consideration. People have tried traction devices with mediocre success that is not always long-lived. But if you have this condition and you're interested in being seen, contact our office and we'll be happy to go over this in more detail.